Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me, feared on my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army should have camped against me, my heart shall not fear. Though all shall rise against me, in this I'll be confident. One thing I've desired the Lord, that will I seek. Though I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of the Lord, of my life. Behold the beauty of the Lord in the choir in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place, secret place of thag, whenever he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall lift above enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices in joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praise to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn and save away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When the Father and Mother forsake me, Lord will take care of me. Teach me a way, Lord. Lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. False, false witnesses have risen up against me, and such has been their violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Wait, and Lord, be of good courage, and you shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so Psalm 27, another long Psalm, Act 25. One of the longest um, starts off with some questions, and effectively the rhetorical questions. Uh, you see the two questions here: "The Lord is my light," in verse one, "and my salvation, whom shall I fear?" Question mark. "The Lord is the strength of my life; of whom shall I be afraid?" So effectively, there is rhetorical because he doesn't give an answer, um, and the answer would really be like, "It's no one. It's obvious. If whom shall I fear? No one." Is the answer. Who shall be afraid? No one. So in that sense, the rhetorical. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, with the times we're living, we talk about whom shall I fear? Or what shall I fear? <laughs> I.e. the coronavirus. Um, I think it's a bit uh, concerning and, and troubling that there really does seem to be genuine fear among the Christian community, copy Orthodox community even with the coronavirus uh, we agree with being safe but never to the extent of having fear of whatever you know, fearing of dying fearing of uh, catching a virus fear of being sick fear of losing a job etc etc um i think that's a bit disappointing like when i was on retreat and i attended the early mass weekly and then you see the attendance decrease at least 50%, at least, probably two-thirds, like, uh, two-thirds of, uh, of going down percentage um, after uh, the uh, virus uh, was spreading more rapidly or more commonly, um, and new laws were in place about wearing masks, which I didn't even know um, at the time. So, I think that's a bit concerning, and I and uh, I, I, I and certainly some priests can concur that there is genuine fear, and that's why people don't come. It's not just because of um, booking or number or, or being a close case contact, whatever, staying at home. No, no, there's genuine fear, and therefore they choose to take the option of just staying at home. But yeah, I think that's a bit concerning, and some priests addressing that we have to have. I have to have a greater confidence in God and, and our life is in his hand. And therefore, we go in the very direction that it takes. I mean, this coronavirus is nothing compared to some other things. Um, I'll go with a stronger case. Like I, uh, I remember, in, I was talking, telling this to one of the boys that I speak to regularly on the phone. Um, in 1996, there was a famous... Uh, 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 period in Algeria where there was a Algerian terrorism was taking over and they were uh, killing people. Uh, so I guess terrorism is part of. They threatened the French community 
in Nigeria, the Catholic community where they have a monastery there in Tiberin. Tiberin. And you can read the book for yourself, and there's a movie of gods and men. Um, and they told him to leave, or we're going to kill you. Basically, you're at risk of dying, and even um, the Monsignor, uh, Monsignor, uh, the, like the, kind of like the bishop, a bishop in France, telling him just come back, live in peace in France. And they took votes in in, in the, the Algeria, the Tiberian, what they should do, and you see, really see that they pretty much the vast majority of them they uh, had such great faith in God and trust in God. And then none of them decided to leave. And it was a great example of faith. And six or seven of them, I think, ended up being martyred. Martyred for their great faith in overcoming the tremendous fear. And I pray and you pray that we can have the same faith. Um, and if we're in that position, we ask God to give us his grace and, uh, and, and overcome our fears. Let faith overcome our fears. I mean, so that's, so this uh, uh, Omicron virus is nothing in that sense. Uh, another example, uh, a couple of years ago when they had the fires, so our position in the monastery was a lot more uh, precar precarious than most positions. We were part of the largest uh, fire uh, area. I think our fire ended up reaching uh, half a million hectares uh, and it was coming to us. And the, the, the fire police, fire truck, firemen told us many times just to leave not safe, you have to leave, evacuate, evacuate. Um, they came to us a few times and I did not feel like the most fathers that uh, it was the right thing to do to leave. I felt that we're in God's hand and we would be safe uh, and God would deal with it. So and in that sense, basically uh, for those who didn't know, basically kind of like did like a semicircle around us, really because they were coming to us, they had three fire trucks at the time. And then it all kind of all depends on the wind. So it was coming from uh, both sides were uh, both sides of the road were uh, on fire. And up going to the cafe, not far from us. And they just saved the cafe, just. So they put all the fire trucks there because it's kind of like a hub. So for us, when the wind changed, the fire tr trucks left, three fire trucks left. And they basically just did a semi circle around us. So it was a great hand of God. And we wanted to face overcome our fear. Uh, and that fire, again, was just like a, I was saying to uh, one of the fathers, I'm like, this is kind of like the marks of Tevrin where they take us what to do, but on a much smaller scale. <laughs> At least we can sort of taste it a bit. Let face overcome our fear. So the same thing applies to the uh, American virus. The other thing I was telling the, the youth, and I go, in my biased opinion, I think that uh, the real problem is People are having a fear of death, which stems from not reading the Bible. Because if you read the Bible, uh, uh, you know, it's throughout, it's like, you know, um, a citizen is in heaven, we don't live for the world. Um, uh, we, live for, we live for in heaven. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so I, I, think that's, I think that's an issue. Uh, if we believe that uh, we don't believe in death, we believe in passing. Passing, uh, it's like a stepping stone to heaven. Uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, etc. You know these verses. I think that that would help a lot in, in overcoming your fear. And the Bible, uh, the, the reason is uh, the more you're in the Bible, it tells you blatantly and, and, and overtly, overtly, let, uh, uh, do not be afraid. I think it's here 65 times. So each for each day. Get yeah, back to the psalm. Um, see that we ask for God's strength. Let us ask for God's strength. Um, he's the strength of our life. We don't depend on man's strength at all. Uh, it's kind of interesting because he kind of repeat, alludes to this again when he says, when my father and mother forsake me, when my father and mother forsake me, Lord will take care, take care of me. So even implying that that the father's father and mother will, will forsake him. Um, so we, we depend on God's strength, not the strength of man or the strength of parents in that sense. Um, verse uh, 2, when the wicked came against me to eat of my flesh, my, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. It's very interesting because Bishop Yusuf, referring to the fathers, I believe, 
he said that this can mean like three things. Um, first sense, it can mean that um, what David was referring to in his life, when the wicked came against me, theater my flesh, my name is the first, like in the story of David and Goliath. If you read the, the story clearly, it mentions this, like when Goliath is saying, yeah, my flesh. We'll just get it quickly. So it's here in verse uh, 44 in First Samuel 17, I think. Um, Come to me. So the Philistine Goliath speaking. Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. So we're refer so David is uh, uh, one aspect David is referring to this. So that's also why it's kind of like a source of his strength and a source of overcoming his fear because he's knowing what happened in the past. Um, the washer has been out, and this I'll be confident. Okay. Uh, he's confident because of what happened in the past. Um, the other thing is it could be referring to uh, Christ in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane. Um, so we'll get that. Okay, so here in the uh, Gospel of John, verse, uh, verse of, uh, 5, I think. Uh, so Jesus, therefore, knowing things that come upon him, went forth and said to him, Whom are you seeking? Then he said, uh, Jesus and of Nazareth. Jesus said to him, I am he. Jesus returned also to them. And then when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Okay, like stumbling and falling. They, enemies and foes, the ones who, who, who uh, they who are Jesus Christ's enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. They literally fall and fell to the ground. So I thought that's very interesting contemplation. And the last one was uh, about uh, communion, about communion, where it says, um, so the words who approach communion, to eat up my flesh, my flesh meaning like my body, like the Holy Communion, even in um, the translation of the liturgy um, by Amber Yusuf, uh, it says at the end of uh, the confession prayer for the priest, I mean, I mean, I mean, I believe, I believe, I believe, confess to the last breath, this is a life giving flesh. I think body is a better translation, much better, but just interesting to see that here, so in that context, it have my flesh, meaning communion, all the communion, and those who approach it, uh like unworthily the enemies and foes ones who uh are unworthily in that sense who receive uh condemnation they will therefore stumble and fill you know in the verse corinthians um he approaches communion un unworthily like, will be condemned um so i thought that's pretty interesting uh, the three aspects there of that verse two which again to repeat somewhat quickly is uh one is david talking about his own enemies or like goliath Enemies of the past and the physical. Uh, another is the uh, uh, enemies of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the last of those who partake of communion unworthily. Anyway, um, the word, do you see the words verse uh, four and five. See the words temple uh, and tabernacle. So God's presence is involved in this psalm. Like is our refuge, so we turn and hide, and hide um, in the secret places we are, and hide in like his tabernacle. Here, hide in God's presence. We want to be in God's presence. Okay, um, he's like our refuge. Um, you also see the abandonment of people, uh, like we said here, those who, those who um, forsake them like the father and mother, so the enemies. A, a man's enemies can even be those of his own household. So we can be abandoned by people. And yeah, we kind of will be. I remember uh, one of the fathers saying early on, my messism, he said, in the end, people will let you down 100% of the time, something to that effect. Uh, in the end, people will let you down 100% of the time, in the end. So therefore, uh, subsequently, God, we have to depend on God only. He's the only one that we can rely on 100% of the time. He's the only source of reliability, um, whereas man falls. No, but the same. Man breaks his promises. It's just a fact of life. 
even Christians that just that just break the promise because man is fallible. So it's really advisable for man not to break his promise, but God, when he promises, it comes through all the time. Um, you got to be careful. I fall into the trap all the time. <laughs> like maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I told Abuna, I promise I'm going to come by and swing by and say bye before I leave. Okay? I don't, shouldn't have promised it because I didn't, I didn't do it. Man breaks the promise. Um, we see he's seeking of God, uh, kind of seeking of God, and uh, we turn to the light. Um, yeah, just the, when it says the word inquire, I thought this is a bit interesting. It says, verse 4, and to inquire in his temple. I'm like, well, why does he use the word inquire? Uh, well, it's a weird way to like, kind of like say seeking, seeking God. And to, but it, it's more deeper. It's more deeper than, um, it's like a deep search. As far as I'm aware, it's a deep search. It's not just asking, yes, how's it going or where can I go? It's like asking the concierge and really uh, uh, and really wanting more information. It's not asking someone from the street. He's asking someone who knows. Someone who knows. So we're crying God. Uh, we're seeking God in his holy place. Okay, we're seeking the source of, of systems. Is he uh, like the concierge has like multiple jobs? He's like the doorman, he's like the assistant, he's like you know, a few things in one. And he, he gives like the concierge gives like suggestions, he gives like recommendations about uh, uh so you ask, he, you ask him a question, uh, and then he, he or she will like give you more suggestion. Okay, what about this? Go, go out here maybe for the day. And so when we see God, he's the one that kind of gives the suggestions that he does in God's presence. That's the way I kind of interpret. I think Abby has mentioned the word inquiring there, maybe concierge. Um, yeah, just the last thing, really, I think to stress on is that uh, verse 13 is nice and 14. Um, it says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord and the living. It's in italics as well. So, we again, we feel like, I think we feel like we tend to give up. We feel like giving up and despairing of life, like when St. Paul says, unless I believe they see the goodness of them and believe it. So, you know, even um, in Psalm 73, we'll touch again in a second, says something very similar, very similar. So we want to focus on the land of living, the eternal life in the heaven in Jerusalem. And, uh, and uh, it's critical. I think it's critical. And I think it's in italics here because it's, it shows the contrast. If you don't do this, if you don't turn to, to uh, this belief and conviction, seeing the, the, the goodness of the Lord in the land of living, the, i.e. the eternal life, you, you're, you're, like, you're, you're gone. You're dead. You're, 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 you're gone mentally. You're, 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 you're going to be, uh, in the negative sense, you're going to be like, kind of like depressed, affected. So I think, unfortunately, again, in my opinion, uh, when we do that uh, and losing fear, and like in the coronavirus and, and not having this trust, we lose heart. We lose heart because we're not seeing, having the righteous side. We, have, we ask God and we say, um, Lord, we do not know what to do, but we lift our eyes towards you so that we can see the goodness of the land that we live in. Um, so we'll see, just to we'll just get to Psalm 73 very quickly. So here, key verse that I'm interested in. Um, verse uh, 15. Uh, C16. When I thought how to understand this, the how meaning like how he seems to think that um, or believe at the time, Asaph, or the one believe Asaph, the person writing this psalm, um, saying that the uh, the people of the world seem to be successful, their minds are at ease, they're not in pain, etc., etc. So until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Like until we um, understand the goodness of the land of the living, then I won't lose heart. Same concept, I think. Same concept. Exactly the same concept. Then we say the last verse, wait on Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Coming back to the first point, how God is, is the strength of my life. Why to say on the Lord, like many parts, it's repeated. So we want to say that so we can uh, gain, gain that uh, confidence and strength and courage in the sun.